This is what my pumpkin looks like in a peach colored orange. This is acrylic yarn and then this is my 100% cotton yarn. Now I'm going to show you how to make these into tail toppers. You can use your 100% cotton yarn or your acrylic yarn. I'm going to use my acrylic yarn one. And I have a separate video tutorial for the pumpkin as well as a separate video tutorial for the corkscrew and a separate video tutorial for the leaf. Now for your kitchen towel holder you can use whatever buttons that you want. I'm using my bell buttons by Dritz. You're also going to need your 4 millimeter crochet hook, a tapestry needle or darning needle with a pointy end for sewing, and a pair of scissors. For the brown yarn, I'm just using my coffee colored Red Heart Super Saver. It's just for the stem, so it'll be for the top of the pumpkin. And let me give some information for those of you that don't have Red Heart. The first thing you want to do is just fold your towel, your kitchen towel, the way you want it. And I left a little bit of overlap from the back. And then I'm going to take and turn my work, my crochet towel over so that the wrong side is facing me. Then I'm going to fold in one side and then fold in the other side. Make sure that it's even. Then you can turn the work over so that the right side is facing you. So this is the right side. If you have words, make sure that you have the words how you want them. Make sure that you use the same colored yarn for sewing the kitchen towel topper in place. For mine, I used a peach colored and this is actually Pound of Love. It's really soft, baby soft yarn. But you could use acrylic, um, red heart type of yarn as well. Then you just place your pumpkin along the top of the towel and you could see how I just place the bottom portion of the pumpkin in place. And then I'm going to come up from the wrong side with my tapestry needle. And you're going to want to use a tapestry needle with the pointed end on it for sewing. And then just come up along the bottom. Make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end on the back for burying into your work. And then you're just going to sew your pumpkin in place. Make sure that you sew it on straight. But you just go in and out with your tapestry needle going through the full thickness of your kitchen towel. And then you can see how it sews easily. Make sure that when you're sewing the front that you don't mess up the design of your kitchen towel. And then I'm going to sew across, up, and then back across and back down to where I started. So this is what it looks like on the back. And I sewed kind of like a bowl-shaped pattern. And I came out where I had my loose yarn end. I'm going to tie a knot. And then you just take and bury the loose yarn ends. And I took and just went through the back of the towel only. So don't go in through the front of the design. Only through the center. Bring the loose yarn ends through. And then you can just kind of trim it so it doesn't show. Just like that. This is what it looks like on the wrong side. And then when you flip it over, this is what it looks like on the right side. Now to hang the kitchen towel, I use the same colored brown 
that I used for the stem of the pumpkin. You're going to take that brown colored yarn, fold it over on itself, form a loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. And we're going to make start the kitchen towel strap the same way as we did for the pumpkin stem. So you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, four. Then hold that last stitch with your middle finger and your thumb. Make a chain of three. One, two, three. Make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. Make your double crochet. And then make one double crochet in every stitch across. And that should give you a total of five double crochet for the row, just like the stem. It's going to start the same as the stem. If you don't remember, I'm just going over it again. Then you're going to chain three. Turn your work for the second row. Make one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across. So that will still give you a total of five double crochet for the second row. And then chain three. and then turn your work and repeat. You can make your strap for your towel as long as you want or as short as you want. For mine, I made mine one, two, three, four, five, six rows long. Then you're going to make your button loop. So whatever length you want for your kitchen strap. Again, mine is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, depending on the size of your buttons, for this size button, I'm making a chain of one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch on the opposite side. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook, and then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And you could see that this is the size of my button loop. If you have a larger button that you're using, then make a larger chain. Go ahead and bury any of your loose yarn ends. Just kind of weave it through your work until it's buried. Then go ahead and trim it. Now you're going to take your strap. I have the one loose yarn end at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and bring that through the stem on my pumpkin. I'm just going to use the top row of the pumpkin stem for sewing on my strap. I'm going to bring the loose yarn end through and then just kind of line up the bottom double crochet row on your strap with the top double crochet row on your pumpkin. And then get the same colored yarn as the stem or the kitchen strap. And then just sew the strap in place. So I'm going to sew all along the bottom row in a rectangular shape. And then I'm just going to tie the two loose yarn ends. Make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then I'm just going to take and sew the two bottom, the two double crochet rows, I should say, together. 
the strap to the top double crochet row of the pumpkin stem and again I'm sewing in a rectangular shape. And then just tie a knot and bury your loose yarn ends and then come back. This is what my strap looks like after I have it sewn in place. Here's the loop at the top. So now I'm going to sew my button in place and my button I'm going to put right here. You can use a regular sewing needle and thread for your button but mine I like to use yarn so I'm going to use a tapestry needle that has a large eye on it but is still slender enough to fit through my buttonhole. And then I'm going to use my DMC yarn threader to help me get the yarn through the eye of the needle. So I'm just going to show you as I thread my needle. I'm going to hook my yarn and then I'm just going to bring the hook back through the eye of a needle. And the easiest way that i found to bring the yarn through is to start moving the DMC yarn threader up and down and then just bring it through. It's real easy. Then just take the amount of yarn that you need for sewing your button on and then just take and place your button. Now when you're sewing your button make sure that you're not messing up the design on the front of the towel. So I'm just going to bring my tapestry needle through and then I'm going to place my button on top of the tapestry needle. And then I'm going to leave enough yarn on the opposite side for burying into my work. And then I'm just going to go through and sew my button on. I'm going to tie a knot on the front. You can't really see it. I'm using the same colored yarn as my leaf. And then just go through and sew your button on. Then when I'm finished sewing my button on, I'm just going to bring the yarn back through the back underneath the button. Then you can tie a knot and bury the loose yarn ends. And then the front, you won't be able to see it. You could see mine a little bit only because I used acrylic yarn for this one. And then to sew my button on, I used my 100% cotton green yarn. But if you use the same colored yarn as your leaf or your corkscrew design, you won't be able to see it. And I'm just leaving mine because you can't really tell. Then the easiest way that i found to cut these loose yarn ends is make sure you tie a knot about five or six times. So instead of burying the loose yarn end, you just have multiple knots. And then you can just take and trim the loose yarn ends. And then that's the back of the button. And then you can take and put the loop in place. And that's your kitchen strap. And this is what it looks like on the front. Then you can make a couple hot pads to go with it. So again, I made these with 100% cotton because sometimes people say with the acrylic it melts it and it, it does. It makes it a little kind of a shine to it. This is my rooster hot pad that I've used to set hot items on. And you could tell there's a little bit of a sheen or a shine to it, but not much. And this one's acrylic yarn. But I would recommend, just because enough people have made comments, that if you want to use it for hot items placed on top of it, just use your 100%, I mean your 100% cotton yarn.